it's been an interesting kind of year, actually. Um, we've had astronomical events this year. Um, we, we had a total solar eclipse not long ago. Um, an event of that kind isn't going to happen for a number of years yet to come. Back in January, we, we also had what we might class as being an astronomical event in the presidential inauguration of, uh, well, one of the more interesting presidents in, in, in recent US history. But there was one key event of 2017 which actually may overshadow all of these. And this was the blessing, which was brought to us in the form of the Emoji Movie. Yes, the Emoji Movie. What a time to be alive. Um, so, this is a film that's dedicated solely to emoji. These little symbols that we use in online communication, in text messages or, or on social media. And what we typically consider emoji to be is a form of emotional communication. Trying to help other people interpret our emotional state, or to try and establish emotional tone within communication. But what's becoming increasingly evident is that emoji is actually revealing more about us than we perhaps realize. And it's not just about communicating emotion, but in some respect, what emoji is actually communicating is aspects of our personality. So what we can do then is ask the question, to what extent can we look at different types of emoji behavior in another person and try and establish something about their personality, what it might reveal about their different aspects of personality. Now, a good way to try and um, study this is under the perspective that personality is multidimensional. We have different aspects of what comprises human personality. And one of the key theories that we use within personality psychology is known as the Big Five model. And what this suggests is that there are five key traits or dimensions which form human personality. And these are extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, and openness to experience. So what we're interested in then, um, in this kind of research, is trying to establish the extent to which these different facets of personality might be related to different types of emoji behavior. Can we find any correspondence there? So this is the exact same question we've been asking at our lab at Edge Hill University. And what we've been doing, essentially, is recruiting Facebook users, primarily. And what we ask our Facebook users to do is to come into our lab. And the first thing we do is ask them to complete a personality questionnaire. So this is in a form of a self-report. So we just ask them to respond to a number of different questions which correspond to each of those five traits. And what we can get from this, then, is um, a, a, a numerical score associated with each of the five. So we have five trait scores. What we then want to do is to see, does this actually relate in any way to emoji behavior? And now we can get this information in a number of different ways. One method we use very commonly in psychology is a self-report. So what we do here is, again, ask people about their behavior. They're just reporting on their general use of emoji. So we may ask questions such as, do you use emoji? If you use them, then what kind do you use? How often do you use them? So this is all well and good, but what the problem with this is, is that people just generally aren't very accurate at being able to gauge their behavior. They tend to either over or, or sometimes underestimate. So it can be a little bit limiting. So what we've done for this research as well is to take a more objective measure of emoji behavior. And what we do for this is basically look at people's Facebook profiles. Now, we can do this ethically. We don't go snooping around people's Facebook profiles and spy on them for, for any time. What we ask our participants to do with their explicit written consent is um, to access their profile. So they log on while they're in the lab. Um, and what we then do with their permission is take screenshots of their Facebook profile page. So what we can get from this, then, is evidence of their emoji behavior. We can look at how many they've used, whether they've used any at all, in fact. And if they have used them, then which kind have they used and how many have they used. So we have a nice objective behavioral measure that we can use to then see, do these different traits correspond with, with the way in which people are using emoji? So what we find on this is um, that we um, develop a number of different categories of emoji behavior. So within this particular research, we had the standard smiley emoji, 
the standard sort of sad ones. But then we also had a third category, which was a kind of miscellaneous category. So ones like sarcasm, for example, that, that don't really neatly fit into the other two main categories. And what we found when we corresponded the different personality traits to the different categories of behaviour, we found that the trait of openness to experience was quite important. Now, openness refers essentially to somebody's level of open-mindedness. So if you're the kind of person who scores high in openness to experience, then you tend to be the kind of person who uh, derives a lot of enjoyment from new experiences, meeting new people, that kind of thing. And we found actually that this trait, the people who were higher in this open-mindedness trait, tended to use this kind of more diverse range of emoji. So not the standard ones, the, the ones like the sarcasm and things like that. So this maybe gives us some kind of insight into what emoji might reveal about people's level of open-mindedness, which is quite interesting. However, what we're actually really interested in is the extent to which another person who might not know this emoji user, what they might understand about a person through their emoji usage. So we want to understand it within an interaction or within a communication because that's, where, that's when we use them, right? So what we then did was we recruited a second group of participants. So we built on study one, the people who came in and we got their Facebook profiles, what we then did in study two was recruit a second group of participants who we call our observers. And we, what we asked our observers to do was to look through each of the profiles from the screenshots which we'd previously obtained and to make a personality impression of the study one participants. Um, and so what we could do then was to look the extent to which the different trait perceptions might be related to the emoji coding of that behavior we'd previously established. Okay, so what did we find? Um, well, smiley emoji seemed to be quite important, actually. So what we found is that the more smiley emoji the study one participants had used on their Facebook page, the more the observers rated them to be high in three particular traits. One of those traits was agreeableness. Now, agreeableness essentially refers to how cooperative or considerate you are to other people. We also found conscientiousness. Um, so this is a trait associated with getting things done on time, being timely, punctual, that kind of thing. And finally, this openness trait again, so this open-mindedness. So simply using smiley emojis seemed to be those were the perceptions that other people had, people who'd never met these people before. They were making a first impression about their personality. Now, going a step further, what we really, really, really want to know is, are these actually accurate personality perceptions? So what we then did to answer this question was to correspond the observer's trait perception scores, the impression scores, with the original participant's own self-report of their own personality. So essentially what we were doing was a similarity for each of the, the five traits. So the more similar those scores were, the more the observers had made an accurate personality impression. When we actually looked then at the similarities, what we found was that the observers were accurate at being able to determine two particular traits. One of those traits was extroversion, and the second of those traits was openness. Um, so what we are assuming within this is that the emoji behavior, the smiley emoji, was one of the behaviors that actually helped them make this judgment accurately. Now, I just want to put this in a broader context um, just for a moment. Um, so we, we know a lot about how we form first impressions and why they're important. But a lot of what we know about this is from what we understand about real world, um, sort of face-to-face -face first impression making. And we know from this research that extroversion is a trait that we're generally very good at being able to, to establish in somebody the first time we've met them, regardless of whether this is in a, a real world context or, or whether it's online. And the main reason for that is that there are a lot of visible behaviors that help us just detect that in other people quite easily. So this isn't necessarily a new finding. What is interesting, though, is that the trait of openness, this open-mindedness trait, isn't something in a face-to-face -face first impression that we're generally very good at being able to establish. Probably because there are not many visible behaviors when you're meeting somebody for the first time in a, in a real-world context that help you understand that. 
However, what we're finding, so what this study and another, another corresponding studies are finding is that in an online first impression, openness is something that we're actually quite good at being able to detect. So I think there's some interesting implications here that are worth discussing. We tend to think of online communication as being a little bit like the poor relative of human communication. And in most cases, actual real-world um, interaction, it, it does tend to be better. It's, it's often much richer. We have a lot more behaviours we can be drawing on to help understand one another. But I think we should be very cautious about making this assumption in relation to all kind of behaviours. And so what this is starting to suggest, then, is that there may be specific behaviours which occur exclusively online. Emoji behaviour may be being one of a number of these, which actually are helping us understand each other better than a real-world context can afford us. So I think this is really important to take on, and the kind of potential for emoji might not be, it's not, they're not just about expressing emotion or expressing personality even, but emoji themselves may be providing us much more information than we're perhaps even aware of. So they may be going some way to help us understand each other's real-world behaviours, whether that's previous behaviour that's happened or, or indeed subsequent behaviours. So I've got a quick, very quick example um, to kind of highlight this. So what I'm going to present is a hypothetical online interaction between two people um, and just sort of interpret what's going on. So it's just a WhatsApp um, interaction. They're describing a previous behaviour, something that happened last night. You kind of know where this is going, don't you? Um, what I'm now going to do is present the exact same interaction, but this time present one single emoji within this. And I want us to consider to what extent we may be interpreting the previous behaviour possibly slightly differently. <laughs> yes. If you've no idea what I'm talking about here, I'm, I'm more or less referring to the Netflix and chill thing. And if you still don't know what I'm talking about, please just do an internet search on that later. <laughs> um, so what the emoji is doing here is providing additional contextual information that we perhaps don't have to the same extent um, in the previous uh, example of that interaction. So, in this case, what I see the potential of emoji to do um, and for research to establish more, more clearly is to what extent emoji may be um, allowing this interpretation, but importantly, how they may be helping us accurately interpret particularly intended subsequent behaviour, because that could be really key, in a way of helping us understand each other to an even better extent. But regardless of what um, the emoji research is going to be looking like in the next you know, five or even ten years, um, I think that we can come to one very solid conclusion, that we've, we've got an awful lot of new material that's going to be arriving um, in our understanding of emoji. And certainly that's going to give us a very strong basis uh, for what inevitably is most likely to end up being the emoji movie, the sequel. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>